Now, the rest of the story. Welcome back to You Know What It Is. So, here I am doing something that I'm not overly impressed about, but ha, I got him. Uh, army worms, grasshoppers, bugs are an issue. So it is September 1st, I'll say that at the beginning of the video. Don't worry, I'm not on a sugar high. I'm actually probably getting dehydrated because these things are really drying me out. Uh, I still got some. Oh yeah, that thing is still full, uh, fully up. So I'm down here in the bottom. I came down here yesterday. Not here, all well, here, but up in the field. Around the buildings, uh, we ran into... Uh, it's not mince words. Uh, basically found some gravel spots. I mean, they looked like gravel from a distance. But it was bare dirt. Literally no stubble left. And didn't take a whole lot of research to decide that it's army worms. I've never had to deal with them before. And I guess they get the word army worm from the fact that the field can look like this. You know, deep green, beautiful. I don't think my camera's really picking it up. I mean, it actually looks like it's kind of yellow, but uh, take my word for it, this isn't yellow. That is nice, deep green, third cutting reed canary. I do have a little bit of herbicide in the sprayer tank for this fill. See, now we're getting into no man's land. Oh! I really probably should have had a differential lock on for that. That's a low spot that's definitely going to hold water, which it doesn't have any in it now. Where we're currently driving, you can see my old line. This is all ground that I've never farmed other than this year. So this was all like 10 years worth of grass and some saplings and crud like that. But because we had such a dry year, I'm going to keep from saying a drought year because in this area, for us in particular, I'm not bragging for anybody that thinks I'm sounding arrogant or anything that we we did get rain. At least we got rain when we needed it. But it was dry enough that you can see where the field ground is. All that nice green growth from there all the way up to right the tip of my finger. All that through there. Now we're good. It was all grown up to just junk. And I always stayed away from it. Because I never knew what was in there. I tried walking across it a couple times. It was holding water. So I just assumed that the previous guy that was running this um, knew that that was a swamp or there's a reason that they're erring on the side of caution. I mean, I do know it does have some areas that's going to hold water. That over there, you guys see my hand? There's actually water standing there along that fence line. There's been words exchanged, I mean good words, not bad words, from the landlord saying that that fence line is going to come out either with or without my help probably quicker if I do it or help them or whatever it's just uh, this year has been hectically chaotic because basically it's the busiest year I've had since we quit milking or the cows got sold or whatever I do the, the quote thing because when grandpa died, died the estate sold the cows and exactly what we wanted them to do anyway so there's no hard feelings or missed feelings about the dairy cows so that's all I'm going to say right there um, this year literally we got to March started checking fence and it went from checking fence to working on the planner to well, getting everything ready to go for field work to field work to Getting done with planting, put everything away, side dress, make hay, side dress some more. And we're running enough hay ground right now where it's keeping me busy. Like, comfortable busy, not sick of it busy. You know what I mean? Because I am spraying my own hay ground this year. I'm not spraying the row crops. I don't really think I like this sprayer for that. I mean, I probably would. 
but 300 gallons does not go very far. Um, filling this bad boy up full and running 15 gallons to the acre, I'm getting right around 20 gallons to a fill. This is my second fill for the day. And I really just want to get this done and get out of here. It's kind of, it's kind of nice. I mean, not if you're sympathetic to animals, I guess, but, or to bugs. Um, but it's nice seeing the grasshoppers. There's either some drought stress or some bug stress right through there. Um, where the grasshoppers are trying to hop or fly through this mist. And they don't make it very far. I like seeing that because, oh, the little grasshoppers or the bugs that are out here, how much could they possibly hurt? It, it, I mean, just let them do their thing. I mean, they're not hurting anybody. Bullshit. Um, any tonnage that I lose is tonnage too much. And the army worms thing, I gotta turn the air back on. Uh, the army, or the army worms, up there um, the ground was I mean I saw it like two days earlier and it looked like this and in two days they got it down to where I'll just post the picture I'm already sprayed it and I don't have a I have a thing about walking over ground that I just sprayed for bugs and all that stuff so I'll just put the picture on it that I took you guys can see uh, the, it's a very clear distinction of nice green grass and bare ground. I mean, not even comparable to what it looks like when I, I cut it with the disc spine. You know, there's some stubble there. I mean, they took it right down to the dirt. And it is coming back. I mean, they moved on. And plus going through and doing this, it should give it a little bit of regrowth. I mean, ideally with another two to three weeks worth of growing, uh, it'll, it'll produce something. It's not gonna produce what this stuff is gonna make, con considering where this is at right now, and then you let it go for another two weeks. Um, about the 15th of September, Realistically, it's probably going to be like the third week of September uh, by the time we we get around to it. Uh, but the stuff, it's actually, I mean, not quite to the front axle. But the reason I'm down here willing to spray this is I don't want to lose any of my yield potential, which should go without saying. I mean, I do have the boom all the way up, so that way I'm... The problem is you get some of those insects that actually will clear the boom if you have the boom all the way down. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but you get that up and you actually have a wall of that mist coming down and you're getting more more coverage. So this stuff, um, I, it's what, good to cut if I wanted to come in and make it. Uh, three days is the waiting period and the residual I believe is two weeks. So two weeks is gonna hit me pretty well right where I need to be as far as when I wanna cut it anyway. So two weeks of residual to kinda of keep the bugs back um, will be worth it. Will at least get me to where I need to be. And then at that point, the bugs start to come in. I'm just gonna to have to tolerate it, put up with it until I can get down here and get it made, which um, everything down here, I mean, you can see how the lower bottom looks just as nice as this up here. Um, the rest of the farm isn't, exact, isn't necessarily as heavy as this down here. It's lighter. But the new seeding, 
because we sprayed off that was about 50 50 grass and clover and it looks kind of crummy now because of the late season foxtail and crud like that but the bare spots that i had from where the clover was are filled in so going through with that coon drill and no tilling that grass mix of a little bit of everything i put in uh, was worth it so gotta keep going here i wanted this is going to be done today I'm pretty much to the point where either I'm gonna get it done today or whatever I get done is all I get done, which if you guys can't tell, the first load went on the most impacted part of the farm and the majority of my attention is going to this down here. This is going to produce, this is going to give me the most return on investment is by protecting this whole lower bottom. And the rest of the farm is still gonna produce something the hillsides do have some bugs on them, which I already sprayed those too because I did the outside round. Uh, my goal was, is actually, I have 130 acres of hay of my own that I have to make. Um, my goal is about another 200 bales. And in 130 acres to average 200, um, five foot wide by five foot tall round bales. I think is very much doable. This stuff, if I can do it right, we'll cut it, we'll windrow it. That way, we're gonna windrow it so the ground can dry out between the windrows and I'll come down, I'll tet it out. Yep, late season tetting, just because trying to preserve the quality and not have to worry about it getting dried down enough to, uh, to be able to bale it because I don't want the drama or the headache. And what I mean by the drama or the headache is largely, I don't want any weather issues where I can't get it dry, like with the smoke we had last year and the smoke we had last uh, this spring, this last cutting, or machinery problems and whatnot. And last fall was nice enough where I had weather problems with taking a whole week to make this down here because the smoke was blocking out the sun. We couldn't get anything dry to the 76 giving me issues to where I couldn't, I couldn't bail. If we didn't have that coon baler last fall, I'd been in a world of hurt. So another 200 bales, I think is well within reason. And that's gonna put me at 776 bales, because I'm currently sitting at 576 total for this year so far. Um, some of those are gonna be for cow feed, but I actually had a bit of carryover from last year that the cows aren't gonna be needing feed for a while. I'm really not going too much as it is right now. And you guys can look at my hand real quick. Um, I got the cows out. I hauled a bunch down to my place the other day. Um, Rocky, the Red Angus Bull, two of my cows, two of my fresh cows, and um, their calves. So that's that much less up at the home farm that I got a supplement, which I'm to the point now where the pasture is actually able to keep up with them to a certain degree where I'm really not worrying about feeding them all that much. And then everything down at my place once we get done with harvest whenever we get to, done with that i'll be letting them out in the field and they'll be able to graze off the waterways and the field edges and the corn stalks if i can make it to late december without having to worry about feeding any, any hay yet i'd be perfectly fine with that i'm a low a low input cattle producer I mean, I give them what they need, but the cows are actually a product of this down here. Don't get me wrong, I like having cows. Um, I'm not quite to the point where I'm gonna have feeder calves to sell consistently every year, but I kept, if I keep all my uppers back this year and start calling out cows, um, putting the bulls in with them consistently, which this year was kind of a mess up because I didn't have any place to go with them which in turn, why I have late season odd goofy cows, but, or calves, you know, but it's no big deal. 
Um, ideally, when it comes to the cattle, they're eating the hay off of this down here that I don't feel uh, is worth selling. And then, if they're able to produce a, group, a nice little group of feeder calves, 20, 30 head of cattle, 20, 30 head of feeders, and get the money back out of those, or the hay that I gotta feed to the cows that way, um, it's worth it. So, I'm gonna end this video because I'm about out of, I'm about out of mix and Actually, if I'm not talking to you, I can speed up a little bit more and run about seven and a half mile an hour. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. Talk to you later.